Well, hello, everybody from Audrain County, Missouri, Sheriff Matt Aller, and uh, it's the weekend. I'm just kind of kind of piddling around uh, and decided I uh, looked out the window this morning and saw that uh, even though it's only 40 degrees, the grass is getting green and uh, it's going to be time to start mowing here before long. And uh, when that starts happening, one of the things that uh, always happens, especially here in Missouri, is snakes start coming out of the ground. So um, this is not, uh, uh, I'm, I'm not willing to argue with anybody over the value of a snake. Uh, I don't like them. Uh, in my part of the state, uh, we regularly see copperheads and we see some, uh, we see some rattlesnakes. Um, I have two police dogs that, uh, that are out loose uh, on the farm here on occasion, and we have two house dogs. And <clears throat> I don't, uh, you know, again, I'm, this is not to argue about the value of a snake. What this is to do is to uh, kind of tell you that uh, if you reload, it is absolutely uh, possible for you to put together your own uh, snake shot, rat shot, bird shot, whatever you want to call it. Um, I've done it for years and uh, have actually, uh, against my better judgment, given the information to other people. But uh, if you get tired, so here's a, a box, and I think I bought this a couple of years ago, but here's a box of 9mm snake shot. Uh, that cost me like 20 bucks and it's pretty expensive and uh, several years ago I started doing a little bit of research and was able to consult loading manuals and come up with uh, a load that for 38 special because if you're like me um, you've got 38 special brass and this is only one of many uh, you've got 38 special brass that you're probably never going to be able to load all of in your entire life. So um, I decided today to come out to the loading bench uh, that doubles as my workbench. You can see from the winter months, uh, we store our boat here and uh, I come out here, I work on things and uh, things don't get put away. And typically when we take our boat out in the spring to, to clean it up for the summer, uh, that's when all this gets cleaned up and reorganized and all that stuff. But uh, for the most part, my the, the actual area where I where I have my loading presses uh, stays uh, fairly clutter free because it's just safer that way. But anyway, so I'm going to get started. Um, what I typically do, I'm going to step away just one second. So what I typically do is take a 38 special shell casing. And I use a reamer and a chamfer tool. And I put a nice sharp edge, um, a cutting edge on there. It's pretty sharp. And yeah, I'm gonna waste this shell casing, but again, I've got thousands, if not tens of thousands. The next thing I do is I find an old ammunition box that's uh, outlived its usefulness. And I use that shell casing on a block of wood to uh, cut the proper size cards to separate uh, the payload and the powder. So just, uh, you know, plan on losing a 38 special shell casing. Not a big deal. So, um, what I, years ago, the load that I decided upon was a 90 grain payload of number seven and a half shot. So, I bought this bag of shot back when my son was uh, in high school and he was shooting FFA trap and uh, we reloaded shotgun shells. Actually, here's the, here's the press for that. Uh, we reloaded shotgun shells for him to shoot FFA trap, and I had a, a probably a bag and a half of this seven and a half laying around, and did a little experimenting with uh, weights of payloads and stuff like that. 
So I started consulting loading manuals and came up with uh, a 90 grain payload. So um, if you have loaded, I'm, I'm not going to tell you what my load is. Um, it's just, it goes against my better judgment. If you do this and blow a gun up, that's on you. Uh, I've done uh, my experimenting and my research, and I have come up with uh, a payload and a powder charge that is uh, uh, fairly effective and completely safe. So, that being said, so I've got uh, a shell casing here that I've already primed and sized on the press. So, with that, I am going to turn on the scale and put in my powder charge. So once my powder charge is in, I'm going to take one of these cards that I cut with the uh, with the 38 Special, uh, the sharpened shell casing, and I'm going to put that over the top of the powder. Find something to push that card down in there with. Get it nice and flat. And I don't know if there's enough light for you guys to see that, but there's a card down in there. That card holding the powder in. So this is a lot like they used to reload old shotgun shells. Um, you know, there was overshot cards and undershot cards, but uh, kind of important to keep the shot and the powder separated. Now I'm gonna measure out my payload of number seven and a half. And it doesn't really matter uh, what size shot you use. Um, what you're gonna look for the most is uh, the weight of the payload versus uh, the weight of what you see in your loading manual. Uh, and that's important because you want uh, your pressures. Uh, so the, the, the pressure uh, of a 90 grain payload, which is what I'm using uh, for 38 Special, uh, the payload is going to be, you're pushing the same payload. You're pushing 90 grains. Um, whether you're pushing 90 grains of lead shot or a 90 grain bullet, it's still 90 grains. So you want to make sure the payload, um, that you're using a load that's safe for the weight of the payload. So we've weighed out 90 grains of number seven and a half shot. See the shots in there? And then we're going to put another card over the top of that. and make sure that's that's as tight as we can get it. You can see that card is holding that shot in. Now what we're gonna do is go ahead and put a bit of a crimp, a roll crimp on that shell casing. And it don't take a lot of pressure, but you just wanna crimp that down a little bit so it kind of rolls that shell casing in over that card. Um, the next thing we're going to do, I use, so you can see in the background, I've got a boat. Uh, come summertime, uh, you probably won't see many videos from me uh, because my wife and I, uh, one of our great joys in life is going to Mark Twain, beautiful Mark Twain Lake uh, here in central Missouri, and we boat quite a bit. Uh, even after work, we'll come home five or six o'clock at night, load the boat up, we're only about 25 minutes from Mark Twain Lake. So we'll go out there, sit on the boat, and listen to music, watch the sunset. If you've never seen sunset on the water, you guys are missing out. Uh, but anyway, we'll sit there, take some sandwiches, and uh, eat dinner, and uh, watch the sun go down on the boat, which is really cool. But uh, I usually have a lot of this marine sealant laying around, which is usually pretty good stuff. So what I'll do is I'll take some of this sealant and I will fill the end of that shell casing with it. Uh, it's, it's rubber, so it doesn't damage your gun, doesn't damage the bore. Uh, it seals up um, 
seals up the, the end of the shell casing. Uh, that way if these things draw, draw damp or get wet, I mean, they should last you for years if you make a few of them. Um, and it's a way to, to under, uh, under the stress of it being in a gun, uh, because I'll be honest with you, I carry a 38 on my lawnmower when I mow, uh, because inevitably I see a snake and, uh, it doesn't live very long. And again, I'm not here to argue with you about, uh, whether or not snakes are good or bad or anything else. I'm just telling you, I don't like them and I don't want them around my, I don't want them around my house and I don't want them around my dogs. Uh, especially the copperheads, which are very common here, and the rattlesnakes, which are becoming more common. So um, if I see a snake, uh, it typically uh, doesn't last very long. But you can see that we've sealed that up with some of that marine, uh, some of that marine um, silicone. And this will be, once this dries, uh, we'll, we'll come back and we will shoot these. I'm going to load a few more. Uh, we'll come back and we'll shoot these and we'll pattern them uh, on a target and you can see uh, how effective these would be uh, if you need snake shot or rat shot or <sighs> bird shot would probably be a stretch. Um, I've, I've, we've got a starling problem every spring and I've, I've messed with these trying to, trying to get rid of starlings uh, that crap all over everything and their crap is like... Uh, Man, the starling crap is like spray paint. It's harder than hell to get off. And uh, I've not had very good luck beyond about 10 feet with these being effective. But exactly what you're looking for, for a snake load or maybe a, a, a pest or rodent load. Um, so we'll come back. Uh, I'm going to load a few more of these and we'll come back and we'll shoot a cylinder full. And we'll take a look at how they perform on a target. So uh, I guess we'll see you in a few minutes sheriff matt oller hey glad to see you back so uh we've given our bird shot or snake shot or rat shot or whatever you want to call it we've given that uh that layer of silicone time to uh cure and i'll walk you up here and show you we have our snake <clears throat> And again, that's my wife's fine chinette paper plates. So, my son was here visiting when I was drawing this. And he said, hey, uh, Dad, uh, what are you drawing? And I said, I'm drawing a snake. And he's like, uh. And I, uh, then I figured out uh, the direction he was going with that. So, if you've got the same dirty mind that the 24-year-old kid does, set that to the side. That's a snake. It's not anything else. So, that being said, we're going to use um, a two-inch 38 Special Revolver to do this. Now, I will tell you this, that the uh, when you use bird shot or snake shot or rat shot or whatever you're going to call it, a shot load, uh, the longer the barrel, the worse pattern you get because as that payload engages that rifling, it starts to spin that payload and it... it creates like a donut effect so a shorter barrel uh, if it's got rifling a shorter barrel is better for a shot load so um, this particular revolver my, my sister will be pleased with this this particular revolver is a rock island uh, model 206 and i'm going to do a review on this because this is my sister's gun and uh, it was less than 200 bucks when she bought it and i really was intrigued by it. So at some point, we're gonna review this gun, uh, probably sometime soon since I'm actually borrowing it, it's not mine. But uh, I have two inch revolvers, uh, inch and seven eighths J frames, but we're gonna use this. And I'm gonna load one shot uh, of, this, of this snake shot that we loaded up a while ago uh, into this revolver. And we are going to, um, at about 10 feet, Put a load on that snake on the paper plate and see what happens all right let me get my ears and eyes on by the way while i'm doing this here's a little disclaimer if you decide to load this uh the liability's on you um you know i, I tell people this all the time 
my load data and my loads are mine. If I blow my gun up or tear my fingers up or tear my hand up or something really bad happens, that's on me. If you decide to do it, it's on you. Just want to throw that out there. I bear no liability in what you do with this advice. All right. So, uh, my average arm span is about six foot. So, I will go here and about another four. So you can see all this. So a snake typically, uh, even if it's poisonous, can't, can't nab you from this distance. But we're going to go ahead and put a, load on this, uh, put a load on this paper plate snake and see what happens. Oh, yeah. Number seven and a half, a 90 grain payload um, on, that, on that paper plate snake. And let's walk up here take a look you can see um, we are probably hitting the spine hitting the head um, pretty good uh, really and there's very little recoil and uh, the payload you get uh, it's it should be low pressure um, a 90 grain payload with uh, a recommended uh, a recommended load in a loading manual should be just fine. Um, very little, very little recoil and a pretty good shot pattern. So let's try the last two. I loaded three, so we'll put the last two shots on there. Uh-oh, I didn't index it right. So there's our last two shots. Let's go ahead and take a look. That dude is dead. Um, so you can see the effectiveness of uh, snake shot or rat shot uh, at 10 foot is pretty effective. So uh, if you have pest control problems or you just want to get rid of the poisonous snakes because again uh, i'm not here to argue with anybody i'm not even going to respond to anybody that talks about how you shouldn't shoot snakes um i have uh police dogs that are worth thousands and thousands of dollars running around the farm and i have house dogs that i really like and um a copperhead or a rattlesnake bite could prove completely fatal to one of those so, uh, and we have copperheads here and we're seeing more and more rattlesnakes uh, in this part of the state. So um, I'm not here to argue with you about whether or not you should kill snakes. Uh, that's on you. Uh, you know, sometimes I've shot rats uh, in grain bins with this particular load. So anyway, um, not, not the topic of discussion. The topic of discussion is if you need a load like this, you can do it yourself at home if you've got a press or even one of them Lee loaders. Uh, you just need to consult a loading manual and make sure you get the right powder charge for the right payload uh, weight. So anyway, uh, you can see that that's pretty gosh darn effective. And I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe and have a great day from beautiful Audrain County, Missouri.